Hey, hi, I'm, I'm Bradley Smith from Turning Point Technology in Harvey Bay, Australia. I'm here as an electronic dealer talking to you about the new fuel system in the modular ECUs that we've just released this year. So, for this to work properly, we, the ECU needs to know what fuel pressure you're running and if your manifold referenced or whether you've got a fixed pressure regulator that time events to the atmosphere. In this example, we'll use manifold referenced set our base fuel pressure and we've got the option of either a fixed value for that fuel pressure which is assu assuming that we're at 43 and a half pound all the time or the way we prefer to do it is we measure it and then this way the ECU will adjust the fueling based on the fuel pressure in the um, <coughs> that we're measuring in the engine at the time when it's doing the injection event. So part of the injector setup is over here we tell, we tell the ECU the dead times of the injectors. We provide this data for a number of injectors and in later versions of the software we will be um, we'll be having a drop down list where you can just simply choose your injector off the list and then you're not going to have to worry about populating all these numbers from data that we provide. The other thing the ECU needs to work and model the injectors properly is the fuel flow rate of course and as we know that changes with pressure so we've got the data in here for a a set of injectors that are about 400 cc's a minute at 45 pound. So the way this translates to a running engine, if we come back over to our fuel table here, is because we're measuring fuel pressure, as the, um, as the fuel pressure drops, the injector turn on time will increase to make up for that. So if you have, if you have a example, like if we just move our simulator here to say 3000 RPM, We'll just wind a bit of boost into this engine. So we're at about three. Let's, let's make it worthwhile. We'll wind about 12 pound of boost in. So our injection time here at, at 56 psi of um, fuel pressure is 17.3 milliseconds. Now if our fuel pressure drops, let's find that dial here we are here. So if we drop our fuel pressure from 56 pound down to say 45 pound, We've gone from 17 milliseconds to 19 milliseconds on that injector. What that means is that you have a situation where you tune a car, fuel's nice and cool, you get your air fuel bang on, you continue tuning for say another hour or so, fuel gets hot, you come back, you got a little bit of cavitation on your fuel pump, your pressure mightn't be at 58 pound, it may have dropped to say 50 psi. Because our fuel model accounts for fuel pressure, you'll find that your air fuel won't change within, of course, the supply constraints of your, provided you're not at the point where you peak duty cycling your injectors across. The way this is translated to cars that I've tuned is I've spent a few hours steady stating the whole fuel map and I'll, I'll come back an hour or two later and I'll, I'll come back to a site I've previously tuned and I'll be within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of an AFR point from where I was when I tuned that that site, it could have been two hours ago and the fuel could have been 30, 40 degrees cooler than it is now. Um, this translates to what I do on the dyno being pretty well identical to what I see on the road and that's that's good for me, that's good for my customers and it's just nice to know that we're delivering a product that just, just works and has a lot of, I'm not going to call it safety but the consistency is key. We know that what we're doing here on the dyno is going to be consistent with what you see on the road. And, um, the great thing about that, as well as this all factors into our transient fuel, so we're using the X-Tower X fuel model where we model the fuel puddle and the evaporation rate. And so again, because all this is compensated for with your fuel pressure, when through those transients where it's not possible for your fuel pressure to stay, I mean in a perfect world, it would follow your manifold pressure one to one, or if it was a fixed regulator, it would just be a flat number now. Unfortunately, real life dictates that that doesn't happen. So even during our transient events, that's accounted for in the fuel model. So your injector latency is always going to be correct because that's looked up from this table. We looked at earlier over, <laughs> over here. So a typical thing that we would see through um, somebody tipping into the throttle is you'd see the fuel pressure dip and then it'd overshoot and come back. It obviously happens a lot quicker than that, but that's that's what happens. Because we monitor this in real time, the ECU main loop speed's about between seven to 900 hertz, so seven to 900 times a second, it's recalculating the fuel volume that you need 
to get the the air fuel ratio that you're asking for, provided you, you've already tuned that part of the map. So, at the end of the day, it just translates to an engine that runs smooth, consistent, is great to drive, and um, you've got that factor of not having to worry about a customer's fuel system getting weaker with time, and your you know your AFR is going lean because of the fuel pressure change. So, that's probably about all we can talk about on this. No, episode. sure. Bradley, you want to show us real quick the, the fuel table at the trace? Oh, of course, yes. Well, <coughs> and this is another thing that real is a real time saver, and um, I've made a lot of use of on the on the um, handful of these that I've tuned over the past um, week or so. <coughs> so we've got a simulator here. So what I'm going to do is simulate doing a dyno ramp on a on a turbocharged car. So before I do this, I'll qualify this with our target AFR table. So we've got a table here where we specify, you know, we're aiming for 12O at 9 pound, 11 O's at, you know, 15 pound PSI and up. We come back to our fuel table and we have a, what we call a ramp mode in the software. So this is where the ECU will look at the lambda that's happening. So you provide you've got a wide band input to your ECU, <coughs> we'll be able to read lambda in the ECU. And it will compare that to the target table and it will tell us how much we need to adjust. So I'm going to demonstrate this now. So we press the, the T button on the keyboard to enter ramp mode. And I'm just gonna simulate doing that now. I'm gonna simulate coming up to full throttle. So we start our ramp at this RPM here. And so yeah, we're ramping up, turbocharged thing. We're coming on the boost. So we're at 15 pound of boost by three and a half grand. Gonna go all the way to six, seven thousand RPM. That's the end of our pull. Bang off the throttle, and we're back down to idle. Okay, so what we're left with here now is a screen full of coloured boxes that are different colours. As I move the cursor around, if I'm just landed on this 84 cell here. It tells us that the average AFR log in that cell through that ramp was 14.9 to one. Our target was 14.42. So we've only got an error of half an air fuel ratio point, which means that we need a 3.5% change in our fuel table to get to that target. I'm going to go to a more dramatic example now, and we'll move down to here, where we're at 15 PSI. We've got a target of 14.9. Sorry, we've got a measure of 14.9, our target's 13.6, which means we're 1.3 AFR points off. So this is going to need a 9% change. And the, the value that we would be putting in that cell is 101.8 compared to the 93 that's there now. So you can go through and manually change those numbers, or you can let the software do it for you. So if we use the shift key like you would in any word processor to shift and arrow keys to select that whole part of the map, we press the letter R, and it asks you, are you sure you want to apply these calculated fuel values? If you answer yes to that question, this row down here will all change. It marks the cells as tuned, so that's why they've turned green. And it's done all the hard work for you. So effectively you do a pull, take that data, let it do the auto trim, do another pull and you'll be bung on within 0.1 to 0.2 of an AFR point from where you want to be. The reason this works so well is because we've got a proper fuel model that accounts for fuel pressure and the injector latency. So with good data we can this can really make your life easier, faster, quicker. What this means is that you're going to spend less time on the dyno, less time tuning, so for your customers that's less expense to them, or if you're offering fixed price tuning, it means that you're going to get more done in less time. And um, the fact that this translates so consistently, um, at least in my experience on cars I've done to the street, it just, yeah, it's great. It's a, it's. It's a quantum leap forward compared to where we were with the, um, the select models a while ago. Where all the maths that we're doing here, I used to have to do manually in my head as I went. So this is doing it all for me. We have a far superior injector model. Um, and I'm seeing engines that, I mean, I work in Lambda personally, so I'm seeing engines where, you know, I've got them stable at cruise at Lambda point one oh oh oh, and we take the car out on the road and we drive for 30, 40 Ks, and all my log data tells me I'm within, you know, point oh oh three of my original tuned lambda value on the street so that to me is consistent and that's with no closed loop to correct it that was all open loop tuned up so yeah thank, I hope, you. thank you bradley not a problem i hope i hope it helps out
Let me see. Let me look. Yeah, we did.